Just move on. Forgive me for going on a bit of a rant here, but um, it's fights like this that should not be happening. Fabian Maidana, the younger brother of uh, Marco Zelchino Maidana, uh, should go on to lose a unanimous decision to uh, WBC interim champion Mario Barrios, who got that belt from beating your Dennis Ugas last September. Mario Barrios, now 28-2 with 18 KOs. Good fighter, but never been, been really high on him. Let's not forget how he got his face broken years back by, where is he at? Uh, Bakhtir Akhmedov, I covered that car back in 2019. Since then, I put a big question mark around him. Uh, so for him to win, if he does win, right now we hear real time. Uh, Canelo Munguia main event is coming up next on this pay-per-view. And now that we wrap up the undercard for Canelo versus... Uh, we're going to wait for him to read the cards, by the way. Now that we wrap up, the under wrap up the undercard for Canelo versus Munguia, I am giving this card a... Four undercard. Four of ten. Amana Stanionis versus Gabriel Mastri. Nice, solid fight. Good on paper, but really didn't live up. Brandon Figueroa got the stoppage against uh, Jesse Magdalena, who came in 4.3 pounds overweight, by the way. But overall, just it was a stinker. The pay-per-view opened up, by the way, with Stanionis versus Mastri. And then Figueroa versus Magdaleno. And now Mario Barrios versus Fabian Madonna. Let's listen to the cards. Let's see. Here we are. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. We're going to talk after. The judges are in agreement. We have a unanimous decision. All three judges scored about the same 116 to 111. All three in favor of the winner. And still champion Mario El Azteca All three saying 116, 111, maybe a little closer than you thought, Chris. A lot closer than I thought. I didn't give Maidana more than three rounds in this fight, plus the knockdown there. Ugh. Far too close for my taste. Barrios had a great entrance. I guess we can say that. Thank you very much, Mauro. Mario, congratulations. Steve Green's back. In the third round, did you feel as though you were going to be able to end the fight and it wouldn't go the distance. Uh, nah, I, I know we came here for our hard 12 rounds, man, I'm, my hat's off to Maidana, he came in here like a warrior, how, how I thought he was. It's always uh, these type of fights that, that are always uh, the ones that, that you don't see coming, that are usually the hardest, and, uh, but yeah, it was, a, it was a great fight. Your eye is basically closed. How much did it affect you here in the later rounds? Uh, I, I started feeling it right away. It was hard to find my range. Get, uh, to get my, my rhythm and everything down. He, he, had, he had a good lateral movement. He, he was picking the shots really well. And, um, but yeah, it, it definitely played a factor. I'm not happy with my performance, but thank you for everybody being here. I appreciate the support. A todos mi gente mexicano. A todos que están aquí de San Antonio. Thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck with your daughter. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Mauro, back to you. Okay, so let's talk about what's supposed to go on. On August the 3rd, you're going to have um, uh, Terrence Crawford taking on Israel Madrimov for the 154-pound WBA title. We just heard and saw him in the crowd at Canelo Munguia, at Sebastian Fendora, uh, still looking like he's healing up from that broken nose because his uh, both his eyes are uh, black. Um, he, Fendora is supposed to be returning in December. Now, when Fendora does, when Fendora does return, he's got to fight the winner of Israel Madrimov and Terrence Crawford, which has a WBA and WBO interim on the line. If he doesn't, he gets stripped of that WBO. We all know Errol Spence wants to fight him. There is, uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Um, so... To keep it on 147, Crawford is supposed to drop these belts. Stanionis, who defeated Gabriel Mastri, is supposed to be elevated to full champion. Barrios is supposed to be elevated to full champion. Cody Crowley is fighting, is getting his mandatory shot against Jerron Boots Ennis on uh, July the 13th. And Crawford still has that WBO. But he's expected to, to drop it. And uh, Giovanni Centillion, Centillion, Centillion I gotta pronounce his name. I always do that. 
is expected to fight um, Lord Shockram Gayasov for that uh, vacant WBO title. Correct me if I'm wrong. And we could see Mario Barrios versus Amanis Stanionis. Uh, later on this year, maybe we can see it on that Fundora uh, card when he returns against Errol Spence, possibly, to unify, to unify those belts. And let's keep open the possibility of now that we see that PBC is working with the Saudis. As you can see, that March, um, excuse me, that August the 3rd card is filled with us um, uh, PBC fighters like Isai Cruz, Rayo Venezuela, uh, just to name a couple. Uh, so we could see Boots Ennis versus Amana Stanionis for the to unify, of course, if Boots beats Cody Crowley or Barrios on a Saudi car, possibly, promoted by Matchroom. So now that that door is open, but it's, it's a safe bet to see that possibly. See, the more money, the most money will likely be with Boots, to be, for the, to be perfectly honest. Um, Boots has come with a lot of money behind him in that division now. So Barrios and Stanionis can make career paydays fighting Boots Ennis because of his backing. But um, if PBC wants to keep it in-house, then, you know, they can make Mario Barrios versus Amante Stanionis, but it will be on pay-per-view as a co-feature to something. And I can see possibly November PBC's November pay-per-view or their December pay-per-view, whoever it's going to be. With that being said, uh, as I said, I am not, you know, we should have known better because, I mean, I did know better because when you have a guy like Canelo fighting on the card and, you know, the Saudis are an exception. When the zone first came in, they were an exception. But when you have Canelo fighting Munguillo in this card, Canelo is going to make at least 30, 40, 50 million dollars. The undercard is going to be scarce. Um, on paper, Figueroa and Magdaleno was supposed to be a barn burner, despite the fact that it's a fight that nobody cared about to ask for. Uh, Mario Barrios and Madonna was supposed to be, I guess, you know, exciting. And the technical fight of the of all the fights on the card, on the undercard, was supposed to be uh, Stanionis versus Mastri. And I did watch the prelims with Vito Monique, uh going to distance with Ronald Cruz. Monique is only 21, by the way. Been around so long, it seems. Uh, and Jesus Ramos returning against um, uh, uh, Johan uh, uh, Gonzalez. So these were the six fights that we've been in, been able to see. Well, five fights so far we've been able to see before we get to the main event. And I got to be honest, four of ten. I'm not trying to be a whore. I'm not trying to be a hoe, but four of ten. Um, and the Haney Garcia undercard wasn't that much better. However, we did get some excitement with um uh 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 Sean McComb losing, getting losing, winning the winning the night, but losing to Arnold Barboza. There was no fight on this undercard that we was watching, like, oh shit, this is a really, really good fight. The closest to a good fight that was like kind of exciting was Stanley Yonas versus Mastri. So, and of course, Figueroa got the knockout. So that's my wrap up of the undercard. Um, and the main event is up next. And remember, we're going to be doing a live post fight show where we're going to be talking about everything um, after Canelo versus Munguia. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm T Street Controversy with 5U360.